Good morning. Today we are going to have a look at our next English lesson. So last few days we have created a map, created a character, we've created a story mountain and then we created our storyboard. So today we're going to start writing the beginning. Tomorrow we'll look at the middle and on Friday we'll look at the end. There are lots of different ways you can start your story. I've just come up with four different options for you to have a look at. So the first one says, are you going to start with a question to grab the reader's attention? Something like, can you keep a secret? This makes the reader want to carry on reading because they want to know the answer to your question. You might want to start with some speech. What are you doing here, thundered Charles? Again, straight away as the reader, I'm thinking, what's who doing where? Who's Charles? What's going on? You want to read more to find out what's happening. You might want to start with a description of the setting or of a character. So I've gone for Loretta Foley was an elderly lady in her very late 80s with white curly hair tucked under her brown leather explorer hat and goggles. I've started to introduce the character so that the reader knows who my story is going to be about. Or you might want to start with a flashback, which we've looked at previously in our English lessons. So this might be you start back you start with the character when they're elderly and then they're flashing back to a different time in their life when they achieve something. For example, this is the true story of my first ever expedition. It all started 30 years ago. It's up to you which kind of story starter you want or you might again want to think of your own. This is my beginning and I call mine story The Secret Explorer. My name is Loretta Foley, now known to my friends and family as Grandma Foley. And ever since I was a little girl, I've always had one dream, to be in a famous explorer, just like my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather and his grandfather before him. My family is one of the most famous explorer families in all of Island Eater, and I desperately wanted to join in on their expeditions. However, when I was a young woman, it just wasn't seen as acceptable for me to become an explorer. As my mother said, it simply isn't proper for a young woman to go off on adventures. So I never did. That is, until one day nearly 30 years ago, when I was no longer a young woman, but as well an elderly 79-year-old lady. So, hopefully you can see that I've introduced my character a little bit and the kind of background of my story, but I've gone with a flashback. Okay, so now we're going to flashback to a time previously in her life when something important happened. It was a grey Tuesday when my selfish older brother, Hugo, returned from his most recent adventure. Hugo was a tall, thin man with a grey spiky moustache and a monocle. His journeys to the eastern archipelago were famous all over Island Eater, which he never let me forget. So again, I've started to describe my character. I'm also linking this with my map. So on my map, I had a picture of Island Eater and I had the eastern archipelago as well. Oh, Loretta, I've just been interviewed by the Island Eater Times about my recent expedition to the furthest isle of the eastern archipelago. Did I tell you I've named this one after myself as well? It's called Isle Hugo IV, he boasted. I rolled my eyes. I am the most famous explorer this family has ever produced, and dare I say no one will ever beat me for daring discoveries and exciting escapades, he continued. I rolled my eyes again. I could discover far more, more than you if only I was allowed, I sighed. So here, just like we've done before when we've been at school, I've gone with speech, action, speech. So Hugo said something, I've rolled my eyes. He said something else, I've rolled my eyes. Okay, so I'm making sure that it's not just speech, 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 speech. I've also got new speaker, new line. Hugo laughed. My darling sister, I know you think you could be an explorer, but you are quite, quite wrong. You simply are not brave enough. You do not have the skills and intelligence necessary to captain your own ship. You could never be an explorer. I scowled. Yes, I could. I'm far braver than you. I've just never been allowed to prove it. Hugo laughed again, and with a brush of his hand that dismissed anything I'd just said, he sauntered from the room. Frustration washed over me. I knew I could be a famous explorer, if only someone would let me. Why do you need anyone's permission? purred my sapient cat, Tilda. You live in a house full of maps and charts, and your family owns more ships than anyone in Island Eater. Why don't you go and prove them all wrong? The more I thought about it, the more Tilda was right. Why should I let anyone stop me from my dream? That night, I sat wide awake and plotted my next move. I already knew which map I would take, the famous mystical map of the unknown, plotted by my great-great-great-grandfather. Everyone in the family believed he was crazy and that the map was made up, but I wanted to see if he was right and if there really was land in the great unknown. So again, I'm referring back to my map because my map had the unknown and an arrow pointing to it. And I said, that's where I wanted my character to end up. 
if you look at my story map, I'm just on the first bit at the moment, okay? I'm only talking about the first part. I'm setting the scene where my character wants to go off and prove herself, but she just isn't allowed. And towards the end of this, I'm starting to get to a point where she's got a bit of a plan about what's going to happen in the middle. Right, have a go at yours. You can type them up, you can handwrite them, I don't mind. And then show me on Dojo or Google Classroom. Have fun!